All right, a long-awaited video. If you guys saw the previous video, I'll link this Nocturno vs. Scourge video down below. Nocturno vs. Scourge was born of the Nocturno and the Scourge being two very, very popular weapons and very, very similar in that they both had six perks which activated explosions that affected the enemies around them. And I figured, well, you guys really seem to enjoy that video. What are two weapons that are extremely similar and top tier in the other direction? And that brings us to the Storm King's Ravager and the Spectral Blade. I'm going to remove the code Mista here because that won't be needed for the rest of the episode. If you guys want to support the channel, go for it. But uh, yeah, Spectral Blade versus Ravager. So a little bit of gameplay for you guys. These weapons, if you somehow don't know, are both fast swinging swords that do pretty good medium to high damage per swing, which is a very, very strong combo. And they both have have a lunging heavy attack which means you can get towards an enemy in battle you can get around the map easier you can get over a ledge it helps you with mobility and combat and it's just a really really nice thing to have i'm not certain that it adds any extra damage it doesn't do any more than like a normal swing to my knowledge it's just a really really convenient thing to have now the ravager was clearly modeled around the spectral blade when they added it to the game but it has the extra bonus of well you need to jump to activate that dashing attack because if you right click the ravager while you're not jumping you send a wave of energy that just destroys all the enemies in front of it and that has caused quite a lot of confusion because in prep for this video i wanted to decide how much is that 245 percent how much does it do and how much dps does that add to the weapon and i'm here to say I have no idea, dude. Let me pull up my math here because I have a whole thing of math where I was talking to stream and talking about crits. This is kind of a nice way to conceptualize. I feel like this might help some of you guys. So this is what I was going with here where like crit damage is kind of how this how, how this works. So let me show this real quick to explain what's happening here. Uh, a good example is like the Hemlock. The Hemlock, if I switch to the stats here, has a 210% chance to crit. For crits, it is an additive bonus, which means, I'll save you the math, which means you are adding 210% of the weapon damage on top of it. So if my hemlock's already doing 8,700 damage, the crit is bonusing, you know, so the actual multiplier is 3.1. For the Ravager, I am uncertain about a lot of things. And let's just go through the shit I don't know right here. So is it 245%, so a 2.45x multiplier, or is it 1.45? And, and and what is that 245 even coming from? Is it the base 31,000 damage from my Ravager? Is it capping out at seven swings, charging up the wave of damage? Is it unlimited stacks? And it's, it's not even a big deal because what's said in the weapon, again, I know I'm not trying to confuse you guys but i really wanted to be certain here like 245 percent of weapon damage which weapon damage it says it stacks up to seven times which leads me to believe that seven is a cap but it also says that it's increasing the width so maybe the the wideness is capped at seven swings but the damage isn't i really don't know and what didn't help further is when i actually brought this in game and tested it I can't see consistent damages, it didn't add up with how much damage I thought I was doing, and I, I'm not really certain if it actually counts with Paleo Luna, so I tried it without Paleo Luna, that didn't help either. Guys, I'm leaving this one to you guys. Um, Here's what I do know, okay? I'm going to leave this to you guys. You can comment down below if you write it up really nicely, especially if you provide gameplay. Do not hesitate to drop any links to gameplay if you guys want to upload on YouTube. That's fine. I don't usually support, like, plugging your channel or whatever. This is different. This is different. If you're testing for me and you're helping me here, I'll, I'll happily allow any YouTube links if you guys want to show me any gameplay and you can prove what you're talking about because this broke my brain and it kind of doesn't matter and here's why. So here's what I boiled it down to. First and foremost, this is a ranged attack, which means how much damage it adds is irrelevant because if you're in an encampment for example and you can just delete the crowd of enemies in front of you that's fantastic it's definitely worth it it's a ton of extra damage it really helps because of course it's ranged and you're a melee user so that's already a bonus and it's doing a ton of damage to the enemies in front of you which is just take the amount of enemies times how much damage you did to each of them and you you know that's that's gonna be in the millions easy and the second thing i realized if it's if it's 245 percent you know whatever that is then if you're doing 100% of your damage per second, which is damage per second, then you have essentially, if you're laying into a mini boss, you know, swing, 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 jumping back, heavy attack, swing, 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 the routine you go through when you're fighting a mini boss, 
If you're doing that, you got about, in my mind, 2.45 seconds to do that heavy attack before you're actually doing less damage by doing that. If that was confusing, I'm sorry. It broke my brain too. But when I'm fighting a mini boss, I always use the Ravager if it's smoke screen because it's the best melee. Or is it? We'll get into that later. Because when you're swinging at a mini boss, swing, 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 it's important to know that you are doing about 471,000 damage per second with your Ravager. So you are losing 471,000 damage per second that you are not attacking that mini boss so if you're going to be using that heavy attack it needs to make up for that damage now now that i've mentioned some numbers i think it's a good time to get into uh the sheet here this is a spreadsheet i use just for calculating damage i did a whole video on this link down below but it's pretty intuitive if you guys want to link to this i'll link this on top of the video as well yes we got uh quite a few night cleaves here that's a future video we'll get into that but i wanted to talk about the specter blade versus the ravager so we are running it uh, with triple attack speed, Paleo Luna with a crit damage perk, and Whiteout Fiona in support. I just noted here that I'm power level 137 because this spreadsheet was created before superchargers existed. So uh, a lot of these are with 131 power level back in the day, or 130 nowadays. So that is kind of our base DPS uh, spec the exact same. So the Spectral Blade spec exactly as the Ravager, devoid of heavy attacks, does just barely less than the Ravager. In fact, if I compare them in game here, you can see uh, this was 130 versus 130. Oh, of course, I took the crit damage off of this. My bad. But the Spectral Blade should usually have a 0.25 swing speed. It is very, very similar in, in performance and how it acts. So these weapons are very, very apples to apples. Like the Spectral Blade swings faster, does slightly more damage, and and then the Ravager is vice versa. I know that this is triple crit damage, that's not helping anything, but I also continued on to calculate the stacking damage. Now, the stacking damage is annoying. For those who don't know, uh, hitting an enemy granting 6% damage every 5 seconds adds a lot of damage to your melee. Now, if we're in a triple attack speed build, weapon damage is not where we're getting most of our performance, so paired with Paleo Luna, it's not adding that much damage, but you can see that that stacking damage actually makes the Spectral Blade better than the Ravager. Now, now, I had to add it sort of cheating here. I added 30% damage to the damage number of the Spectral Blade, and then I kind of approximated. This might not be an exact figure, but suffice to say, the Spectral Blade is better than the Ravager when that stacking damage is ramped all the way up. And there's another thing to consider. This was brought up in the uh, Nocturnal vs. Storm King Scourge video because it's relevant, and that is that the Ravager is locked to physical and energy. I never recommend physical against elemental enemies. It'll be doing way less damage, and it's just not worth it, but energy is doing doing 75% of its damage towards all elemental enemies. So, uh, the Spectral Blade having more options, if you're running it water, that means the Spectral Blade versus a fire enemy is doing 100% of its weapon damage without any debuff, and the Ravager is actually doing 75%. So, any numbers you have comparing the Ravager to the Spectral Blade uh, are just sort of reduced if you're fighting a fire enemy with a water Spectral Blade. You can just take 25% of the damage from the Ravager off the top because it's it's locked to energy. And if you're in a fire mission with a water Spectral Blade, it is definitely better than the Ravager. And that is a serious thing to consider. You can see my 144 Ravager did do quite a bit more extra damage. It was still beat out by a 130 Spectral Blade. Pretty considerable in my opinion. So seriously speaking, I don't think that there's a clear winner here uh, conceptually. I think in, in water, you know, versus fire missions, Spectral Blade's better. But in general use case, the Ravager is the superior weapon. Of course, it's limited energy, so, you know, you know, you know. But it also has that range attack, which is, again, why I started off with my brain breaking, because I wanted to know, hey, I've been telling people that that ranged attack makes up for the difference, but now... I'm really not sure if it does. If you're fighting a single target like a mini boss or a smasher, it's kind of a question mark whether or not that heavy attack adds any more damage against a crowd of enemies and, uh, of course, in the middle of combat, attacking an enemy that's not right in front of you. Of course, that ranged attack is super useful. Anybody who's ever used the Ravager knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's a fantastic thing to have, and it's why I picked the Ravager over the Spectral Blade more often than not. But the Spectral Blade definitely has its merits. So... There you go. Spectral Blade versus Ravager. The clear winner is the Ravager, but also kind of the Spectral Blade, surprisingly. That stacking damage really closes the gap. And I didn't even talk about stacking crit rating. But if you guys want to get into the perks of the Spectral Blade, link to that video down below. That is where I get much more into that specifically. Also, link to the Ravager best perks down below, because I get into its perks as well. And there is a, uh, a reason I was running triple crit damage on the Spectral Blade, because that video kind of called for it. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to support the channel, feel free to use code MISTAGE to check out. Videos like this do take a lot of work. All right, Twitch link down below, YouTube link, subscribe if you're new. Thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, have a nice day. <laughs>